The first step in correcting facial asymmetries is to understand what actually caused the facial asymmetry to begin with. Of course, we're dealing with airway orthodontics and expanders and myofunctional therapy, and really what a lot of facial asymmetries are caused by, and I'm not saying this is the only cause, but what a lot of facial asymmetries are caused by are tight muscles that push and pull on the jaw structures especially during childhood when we're growing and bite dysfunction. When people bite down, the pressure may be a little bit different on one side than the other side and correcting the way these muscles are putting uneven pressure on our jaw structures while we're expanding is the best way to try to improve and correct facial asymmetries. I'll be the first to tell you that there is no way to perfectly correct a facial asymmetry. It's one of those things that we look at, we pay attention to, and we can correct it to some extent. So let's talk a little bit about our skull here and talk about what's actually happening when we're correcting facial asymmetries. There's obviously different bones in the face, the maxilla, the zygoma, and what's going on with facial asymmetries is the size and shape and the orientation in which these bones come together is not symmetric. You know, if you draw a line down the middle of the face in a horizontal, things are not straight. So the opportunities to correct the facial asymmetry is going to come down to either correcting the size and shape of these bones or changing the way in which these different bones connect together. What I can tell you is that it is very difficult to change the size and shape of an individual bone in the face except the maxilla. During expansion, we're actually expanding the maxilla and we're changing the size and shape of it. What's awesome is the maxilla is at the center of the head, so it puts pressure on all the other bones and during natural growth and development, it drives most of the development in our face. So when we get in there as airway dentist and we're doing palatal expansion, that is actually gonna create the opportunity to correct the facial asymmetries. When we actually do palatal expansion, we're putting pressure on the maxilla, and that's gonna put pressure on the connection between the maxilla and the zygoma, and really any bone that is touching the maxilla can get pressure, and those are where we have opportunities to change the size and shape of bone where those bones meet, and we can also get some movement of these cranial bones as growth and development occurs. Let's go back to the muscles that may be pulling unevenly on our faces. And if those muscles are uneven, like it's pulling more on one side of our face than the other, that will actually influence the size and shape and the orientation of these bones that I'm talking about. So let's just say, for example, somebody has a cheek attachment that is much tighter on the right side of their face than the left. If that person is experiencing either natural growth or expansion, that pressure is gonna influence the size and shape of the bone. So these pressures will actually positively or negatively impact the shape of the bone. So if we're gonna to wanna to correct facial asymmetries, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to actually go in and assess these muscle attachments that are pulling unevenly, and we're gonna to wanna to release these quote unquote tethered oral tissues and make sure that the attachment is not excessively pulling and make sure that the attachment is actually the same amount on one side than the other. One of the critical things we do in our treatments is we will actually go in and look at these tethered oral tissues, see if they're in fact too tight, see if there's more attachment on one side than the other side. And when we're planning our cases for expansion and all these other things, we'll actually release these tethered oral tissues and actually use neutral, level, even muscle pressure to our advantage to correct the facial asymmetries. The tongue is actually a muscle that contributes to this process a lot. When people lift their tongues up into their palate, it should be pushing up onto the palate at rest or at least passively suctioned. I oftentimes see that people's tongues will push a little bit harder on one side of the palate than the other. Sometimes it's pushing harder on the front side of the palate than the back side of the palate. And again, if we're getting growth and development and the tongue is putting uneven pressure on the palate, that's certainly gonna affect the size and shape 
in the orientation and the symmetry of the maxilla, which in turn is going to change some of the positions of the other cranial bones. Correcting tongue function, lip and cheek attachments, having our patients work with myofunctional therapists who are knowledgeable about these things, that are giving our patients exercises to create coordinated facial muscle function and pressure that we're gonna be able to put to our advantage when we're doing our expansion therapies and we're trying to correct facial asymmetries. Another force that can really be trouble is our bite. When people go to bite down, sometimes people will hit one teeth on one side before the other side. And certainly if your bite is uneven, that's another pressure that would be exerted during growth and development and expansion therapy. And that can certainly cause our faces, like if you hit one side before the other, it can actually lift the maxilla up on one side. And that certainly would start a facial asymmetric pattern. What we will do when we're correcting facial asymmetries is we will utilize what we refer to as a neutral bite position on our appliances. We will be employing an appliance that has an area where the patient bites down on. We'll take measurements to see where when the person brings their mouth closed and their jaws align, that they bite into a position where all the jaw muscles in and around the face come to rest. It's not going to introduce any additional facial asymmetries. And if anything at all, it's actually gonna help us improve facial asymmetries. So let me review this. The things that we put to our advantage, we're looking to release tethered old tissues that may be pulling differently on one side than the other. We're looking to control biting forces to make sure that they're even. These are things that we're gonna to put to our advantage or we're gonna build features into our expanders that are, that are not only going to develop the size and shape of our patient's jaw spaces and palates, but they're also going to act in a coordinated way to put even pressure to get symmetric growth and possibly correct some of the existing facial asymmetries. The last thing that we may sometimes do, if all else fails, is we may use outside pressures. For example, elastics. If I notice that my patient's maxilla is looking like this, I could put tads somewhere. It could be on the lower jaw, the upper jaw. And that way, when the patient opens, it can actually act to level the maxilla. I'm not really a huge fan of reverse pull headgear, but if our patients are lacking forward growth, when we put our elastics on there, if we notice a little bit of an asymmetry or the maxilla is leaning a little bit down, we can actually incorporate elastics and headgear that pull to act to correct these facial asymmetries. I'm sure in this video, I haven't answered all your questions about exactly how we correct facial asymmetries, but I've given you a few examples. I've talked to you a little bit about the root cause of facial asymmetries, how we try to correct these uneven pressures so that when we do expansion therapy, we can actually help our patients create more symmetric facial profiles as well as getting bigger, better airways and jaw spaces and balanced bites.